In this segment here, I want to talk about my go-to baits when I dock fishing. Uh, today, all we used was a uh, little four-inch finesse worm. You got a two-aught straight shank hook. I think that straight shank hook is really important too. Anytime you can flip and get away with the straight shank hook, I prefer that over a J-bin. It just seems, you know, you, you get a little bit better hookup on your fish. But anytime the spawn's over, say late April through May through summertime, especially in the summertime, this is my go-to bait, my number one bait. Just a plain Jane, simple, four-inch finesse worm. Um, and keep the colors, the colors on that are green pumpkin and blue flake. Those are the only two colors I use. And the other bait I like to use in the summertime and say after the spawn is a shaky head. And I'll keep the colors on that from green pumpkin to watermelon candy. And if the water's really dirty, there's a color called black grape. Um, that black grape seems to work really good when it's cloudy or the water's a little bit dirtier. But um, the shaky head, if it's really tough and they're not biting a shaky head, they're probably not gonna bite anything. I mean, that's a bait that usually gets you bit when nothing else will. But there's a couple, couple things I wanna point out on that shaky head that's helped me. Um, when you're picking out your hook, This is an example of one that I probably wouldn't use. I mean, it's the same size weight, it's a 3 16 ounce, but as you can see, the hook eye, the eye tie on here, is pretty much going, left, uh, going up and down on the, on the top of that jig head. And the other thing is too, see how that hook shank isn't very long, and it doesn't have very much of a gap there. Now this is a uh, tour grade shaky head. You've got this eye tie here, it's going left to right on top of the lead head. And the other thing is too, it's got a, uh, it's got a 45 degree angle on that eyelet. And that helps you with your hookups a lot. But the other thing I like about it is that hook has a little bit bigger gap on it. So those two things will definitely help you out a lot when you're shaky head fishing. Um, I, when I was throwing these top head heads right here, you have a lot of those fish kind of jump and throw your bait. When you start throwing one that's got a line tie like that, it's got a 45 degree offset and the eye tie runs you know, left to right of the top of the bait, you, you won't get that near as much. So that's a couple pointers on your shaky head. Uh, another bait I like to throw, especially in the springtime, is a tube, a green pumpkin tube. That's a three and a half inch green pumpkin tube. I try to get the biggest hook I can in there. That's a four aught hook. But uh, in the springtime, for whatever reason, I think it's, you know, those bass just really can't stand perch that time of year. Um, I mean, I won't get in my boat without one of those, especially if I'm fishing docks. But uh, another little key factor that's going to help you out on your hookups on a tube, um, <clears throat> I've got two, two tube, tubes rigged up here. We've got the same exact four-aught hook in both baits, but this one here is how it comes out of the package. See how it's, the point's kind of buried into the plastic? And this one here, I've actually bent it out just a little, little bit to make that point run parallel with the bait. And what this solves is a problem of a lot of those fish jumping up and being skin hooked in the mouth and throwing your bait. So if you'll bend those hooks out just a little bit to make it run parallel with your bait, it'll help you land a couple more fish throughout the day. You see the difference on that? Look at the top of the hook. Now this is a J-bin hook, this is a J-bin hook. Same brand, same everything. What I like to do when I get these hooks, these J-bins, I like to take my pliers and kind of bend them out just a little bit, just to make the, the the sharp, the, the tip of that point of that hook to go parallel with that bait. Because see, if you keep that J-bin like it is now, see how that point's burying into the plastic? I mean, it's still weedless like this, but when, when I first started fishing the tubes a lot, you know, I'd flip up there, have one bite it, and you set the hook, he'll jump, throw the bait. And what happens is that hook pointed down like that, a lot of times that hook buries into the plastic, or you just kind of barely skin hook them. So if you'll take that tube hook, kind of bend it out a little bit, just where it's parallel with that bait, that'll help you, help you with your hookup ratios too. So springtime, throw that tube. I mean, that's, that's probably my number one bait. And if they're biting really good, you can go to the jig too. I'll use this in the winter time, say December, early spring. And probably my number one color is that black and blue with a green pumpkin trailer on it. I don't know what it looks like, but it just seems to work really well for me. Um, even in clear water, it seems to work really good. But uh, springtime, the two baits I like to use is a tube and a jig. And then after the springtime, when things kind of tend to get a little tougher, I'll go to that shaky head and that small finesse worm. And uh, you know, if you're fishing your docks and they get really, really windy on you, you got some wind on them, you know, go to your square bill crankbaits. That's just a plain Jane square build crankbait. You know, bang them off those poles, bang them off the ladders if you got a lot of wind. Anytime you got a lot of wind on your docks, you can catch them on the crankbait. 
If there ain't a lot of wind, don't throw it. It's gonna be a little bit tougher. But if you got wind, clouds are even better, try that crankbait, square build crankbait. But the key is when you're throwing that crankbait, you've got to have it hitting something. You've got to have it deflecting off a pole, hitting a ladder, bouncing off those rocks. Just don't throw it up there and just reel it in. Have it deflecting off of something. That's gonna trigger that reaction strike that you're looking for when you're throwing a crankbait. But uh, those are pretty much my go-to baits when I'm fishing docks. Um, just remember, look for something different on the dock, something that's not, you know, stands out, out of the way, say like when we show the ladders, the PVC pipes, and then stick with those, those baits through those seasonal patterns, and it will help you with your dock fishing.